Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be talking about what I have noticed from being around Enneagram type 7s. If you don't already know, my name is Kaylee and I am an INFJ 9 wing 1. I hope you will like and subscribe to become a part of the family and stick around for some more videos to come. Also check out the link below, I do Enneagram coaching, so click on the link and it will take you to my website and we can really talk about your number, figure it out what type you are and what to do once you know what your type is. If you're feeling stuck or you're feeling held back in life, I would love to talk to you about what we can do to work through this and to have some forward motion. All right, let's get into the video. No one wants to change an unhealthy seven or an unhealthy two in their impulses. When a seven is in their impulse, they are bringing joy and bringing light and they are adding another quick, funny, witty remark. When sevens are following their impulse, people are happy because a seven isn't really gonna be challenging people and a seven isn't going to be questioning people. Sevens, honestly, they are going to be fun, they're gonna be energetic, they're going to be bringing light and laughter wherever they go. Think about Robin Williams. If you watch any interview with Robin Williams, he's up and running around the whole studio joking with people in the audience. It's fun to just watch him go, like a wind-up doll, you know, going through the motions. And so that is a seven in their impulse, following the voice in their head, following the first thing that comes to their mind. So sevens are in the thinking group. Their order of operations are thinking, doing, and then feeling. So they don't have any reach into the feeling group, the two, the three, the four. So they, you know, shame is not really on the top of their mind. And not like a five or like a six where you have these like super deep thinkers all the time. That's not really what makes up the structure of a seven. Don't get me wrong, they are such deep thinkers and they are highly intellectual, especially when the seven moves to the five. Because when the seven can move to the five, they can really start investigating and learning and just consuming knowledge. But if they aren't in that healthy five space and they're not really using that six wing and they're just relying on that eight wing or that unhealthy one space, it's gonna be a lot more acting on impulse. So I have this thought, I need to do it. I need to act on it, <laughs> you know? So this would be the funniest thing to say now, I'm gonna say it. This would be what would amp up the group the most, I'm gonna do it. And you know, we love sevens for that because they take the social light pressure off the rest of us. Someone has to be on the stage performing and if, and the seven is comfortable with that. It's not because they want the recognition and they aren't necessarily like the three and wanting people to see them in such a, um, in a place of authority, but they will place themselves on the stage because now no one else has to worry about it. So sevens aren't necessarily the best at drawing the line. So they don't necessarily know where the line is and where, when they're crossing the line or not. So one of the first things I've noticed from being around sevens is they don't necessarily know when they're stepping over the line. They are called the enthusiast. This doesn't just relate to in a social setting when we're all talking about this sad thing that happened and you crack a joke and we look at you and we're like, this is a funeral. You can't joke about Nana. Are you serious? And so it doesn't just relate to that. Sevens don't know where the line is necessarily unless they're really looking for it. They might not be able to find the line in anything. Okay, the enthusiast, they're enthusiastic about whatever it is they're doing. So I'm, if I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna be a bodybuilder. If I'm not gonna go to the gym, then why do I need to work out at all? I just do my routine thing to maintain my body, that's about it. So sevens are gonna you know, be all in the information and you know, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna be the best student. I have straight A's, I'm gonna get my doctorate, I'm gonna get another master's, I'm gonna get these side certificates. But if a seven is not 
if their interest is not in schoolwork, if they're not enthusiastic about that, then why do I need to go to school? It's Ferris Bueller's day off. How can I get out of this? I'm gonna put more work into not having to do this than doing it at all. So that especially relates to two of the sevens, not the counter seven. The counter seven is going to look more like that one and try to be seen as good. And they might, you know, go into these situations that they don't really like because, well, it needs to be done, so I gotta do it. And, um, but the other two sevens, they're gonna be less likely to be okay with putting themselves in these uncomfortable positions and uncomfortable situations that to them really don't matter. Which takes me to point number two. One thing that all of us love about you sevens is if you ever want permission for something, go to a seven. I have a friend who's a seven and uh, I said this to her about sevens and she said, oh my gosh, that's 100% that's true. I have friends that would call me up and say, do I really need to go to class today? I say, heck no, why do you wanna go to that place? And so, you know, if you want something or you would like to do something or you don't wanna do something, if you tell your friend who's a seven or if you are a seven, maybe notice within yourself, your initial reaction is to, yeah, sure, sounds good, to go with it. And you can look very nine-ish or four-ish in this acceptance. You can look very nine-ish or four-ish in this acceptance of other people's decisions, actions, and choices because, you know, some of the, some sevens I've seen that look like nines and that, they're like, dude, go ahead, doesn't matter, I mean, it's all right, you know, you do you. But some instances where sevens might look like fours is like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber when he's wearing the tutu and has the hair and, you know, he's gonna be wearing something kind of ridiculous and you go, oh my goodness, what are you doing? And it's not because it's really what he wants and his real identity is this and he's not trying to be different, he's trying to get a laugh. And when other people do that kind of thing, the seven is, all right, sure, that's great. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, somebody's got to be the butt of the joke. And so sevens can really seem like fours or nines in that willingness to just accept people and accept every all the chaos going on in their lives and also just give you permission for whatever it is that you are looking to do. So if you have something that you need advice on and you go to a seven for counsel, if they are not a mature person, okay, everyone in their unhealth is unhealthy. Okay, no matter what type you're talking to, anyone who is immature, underdeveloped, any type is going to be just not fun to be around. But if you go to a seven who's unhealthy or immature in their thought process and you're really seeking advice on something and you really need help figuring out a problem, it might not be an answer you need. They might not give you an answer that really you need. It might be the easiest one to take though. It might be the easiest path though. I either need to, you know, make this hard decision or do this other thing. The seven might say, well, why would you wanna do that? Why don't you just do this? And so when, if you're talking to an immature seven, they might see everything through the lens of what do you want to do, what do you not want to do, not so much what do you have to do and need to do. And that's why they really need that one to ground them. So if a seven can use the helpful parts of one and get counsel from the helpful parts of one, it can help them make those hard decisions and you know, be a good friend and help them make decisions in their own life and help other people too. Number three, the third thing that I have noticed from being around type sevens, especially seven eighths, okay? Especially that realist, the seven wing eight, you have the impulse of the seven and the drive of an eight. So one thing I've really noticed is you will sacrifice what you really want for what you immediately want. One of the ways that I've seen this play out is in 
the seven who really wants good friends, good connections, people that they enjoy spending time with will sacrifice those relationships for whatever it is they want in that moment. So you are a good friend to me, but maybe they take a little bit too much advantage of that good friendship. So not every seven is like this, but one thing that I've noticed is with some sevens, they might sacrifice what they really want, the good relationships, the reliability, a stable job where they have income, they might sacrifice some of those things for what they want, okay? A very extreme example that I have seen of this kind of, you know, sacrificing what you want for what you immediately want, what you want right now, the present moment, is I know someone who cheated on their spouse and lost all of the family's money uh, gambling, moved away with the person they had cheated on them with, and you know they were gone for a few months, and then they came back to that old relationship because they decided, uh, now I'm bored of that. Any type can do this, but the way I saw it play out for the seven wing eight was that they were bored with what they had, got distracted, and they let that control them all the way across the country, losing everything for the family they had spent so many years with before. And then when they got bored of that, they came back into the other the old family's life. If you've experienced this kind of thing in your life, it's probably scaled back on a much smaller level of just, you know, I've had a really good friend for several years, but now all of a sudden their parents are going through a divorce and every time I see them, they are just complaining and crying and it's just, it's, I don't wanna be around that, so I limit the amount of time I spend with this friend severely because that's that's not, not that is no good mojo no thank you so you might experience something more like that than just leaving your entire family in the dust because my next point point number four is seven wing sixes are actually some of the most loyal people okay they don't Sevens don't necessarily seem like they would be super loyal because, you know, people I think will poke at sevens and think that they have ADD or ADHD and their mind wanders and drifts. So how could they be grounded or connected to something for a long period of time? But seven sixes are actually very loyal. I know a girl who's a seven six and she's was, oh my goodness, yes, everyone thinks that I must be cheating on my significant other because because of the advice I give them and because of just the way I act, but I'm not. I love him so much. I could never do that. And um and I think a lot of times this you sevens who are very committed, very loyal people you feel like, you know, you are misunderstood by the Enneagram because we all poke at you and no way, there's no way you could be. You're, you're ditzy, you're spacey, there's no way you could be, you know, committed like I could be. But you have that one in you that's going to help you be dedicated. You're an enthusiast and you can bring life to a dead re or dying relationship or a friendship. You are very easily going to forgive things. You know, if someone wrongs you, you're great at forgiving them and moving forward. I think that's a beautiful quality of sevens. You can bring life and energy and love back into a relationship. You're so good at forgiveness and moving forward. You're so forgiving and compassionate in relationships because of that aspect of, you know, accepting people as they are and accepting things the way they are. You can be very compassionate and forgiving. And, you know, that is a very important aspect of long-term relationships. Because if you're unable to forgive or move forward, there, there's no forward motion. 
So sevens, you are very good at forgiveness and you're very good at compassion, which can really help you in long-term committed relationships. Okay, a big one for type sevens, number five. This one is if you sit long enough with your boredom and experience the pain of tedium, you know, tedious tasks, if you sit long enough in that uh, boredom in that bored state you might feel pain and it could be related to unfinished problems so sevens and nines and twos are the optimists I think twos really look at the world and they see problems but they can see how to fix it so they see how I can come in and you know clean up the mess. I can come in and take care of these broken people and it will be okay, you know? So they have this optimistic point of view because they see all the bad things but they can fix it and it can be all right. See, everything's okay now. We're all together and it's fine. You know, nines are the optimist and they're more like, what are bad things? I like everything, you know, life is good because I just love everything, so it's okay. I'm, I'm one with the world. I don't see problems. I just see these things and those things. So when nines choose to not have an opinion about something, they don't really have to see good things or bad things. They just see a bunch of relative things, okay? Now sevens, the way that you are expressing your optimism is something bad may happen and it is a bad thing, but your brain just switches it. It just puts it in another box and this bad thing is transformed into something else. You're not living in a daydream, but these bad things are rewritten, okay? You reframe pain and you reframe the past and you reframe uncomfortable situations. You can even reframe the future, you know? Reframing the future could look like, you know, for two different students sitting in a classroom and they both got called into the principal's office and they have to go. One is thinking, oh my goodness, what did I do? I shouldn't have done all these things. Oh no, that I'm getting in trouble. Mom's gonna spank my butt when I get home. But a seven is gonna be thinking, he probably wants to ask me where I got my shoes. Yeah. He wants to ask me where I got my shoes. We're friends, come on, we're friends. Seven, you know, dissolve the, the, authority figures into peers so now we're all we're all peers you know you're my friend I'm your friend we're equals here I don't need to be worried because we're just you know we're living life on the same planet the same time we're even in the same room it's all good we don't need to worry about it when there could be real actual problems that the principal wants to talk to them about. Reframing the future could look that way, but sevens really do a lot of reframing the past and sometimes the present. So when you aren't filling your mind or you aren't, you know, keeping your mind occupied, it can be burdensome if you have a lot of things and you have a lot of negative experiences that you're trying to forget about or you're trying to morph into a different thing. So when your attention is pulled off of all of these other things, the thing that you're collecting right now or what you're learning about right now, when your attention is pulled off of that and you're left to just sit in silence by yourself, you might experience pain from not just from not doing, but because you have pressure pushing on your walls, trying not to burst through the seams of all these things that you haven't dealt with, okay? So that's a lot of times for present situations that you feel this anxiety or you feel this this heat and this worry. So the past is the past. And if you have problems in your past, you can not really feel pain from that now, but if you have problems in your present, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable and fun and enjoyable to do things that take your attention away from that than it is to deal with it. 
Which leads me to my next point, number six. Okay, you sevens don't care so much about the things that you care about as much as you think you do, okay? You think you really care about this this thing that you're collecting, your pop figures. You really care about them or you really enjoy Candy Crush, playing this game on your phone all day long. You really enjoy these things, but it's not the things that you enjoy so much as it is having your mind occupied and your attention focused on something, okay? You need this outside stimulation because without it, you're bored. You're sitting in pain. So finding something beneficial for your time and finding something that will result in a fruitful life will be your greatest ally. Okay, so if you really do enjoy uh, pop figures, you might not really be enjoying those. Maybe instead it's the knowledge. You like learning about each one. Start focusing your attention on something that is practical and useful for your life and you can use in the future. Instead of, I know all of this knowledge about pop figures or I know all of this knowledge about Blake Lively's relationship status, you can instead focus your attention on practical information that um, you might find you really enjoy learning about. Okay, that is pretty much all I have for today's video. So I will see you guys in another video soon. I hope you will like and you will subscribe to become a part of the family and I will see you all pretty soon. All right, bye.